This is the remarkable story of two young people from Pennsylvania who reinvented jazz in New Orleans. Meet Sandra and Alan Jaffe. Alan was raised in Pottsville, Pennsylvania, while Sandra grew up in Winfield, a suburb of Philadelphia. Alan learned to play the piano and tuba in his father's wallpaper and paint shop, showing off his instrument in the presence of his parents. He studies economics at the Wharton School of Business. During his service, he regularly visits New Orleans and falls in love with the city. Sandra's father practiced various jobs, including a gas station and a tap room. Her mom was a homemaker. Sandra studied at Harcum College and was awarded a Bachelor of Journalism and PR. She worked at an advertising company and took art classes at Harcum with Martin Zepin and suddenly found herself drawing every day. While attending an outdoor theater play in Fairmount Park, she meets Alan. They talk a lot about playwrights, art, faith, education, and hobbies. Sandra and Alan get married on Christmas Day, 1960. The ceremony was performed in the Adath Israel Temple, Marion. <laughs> Following their marriage, the pair opted to hit the road for a while in a Volkswagen Carmen Ghia sports car before making any commitment to whatever might follow. They set off on a Kerouac-style adventure to Mexico City. At the end of their long honeymoon, while making the trip back to Philadelphia, they stopped in New Orleans to look for jazz records. What happened next changed their lives and the fate of the city forever. Alan shows Sandra the most interesting spots of the French Quarter. They scour the neighborhood looking for fun, interesting places. In Jackson Square, they listened to a jazz band. The Jaffees had a conversation with the musicians who were on their way to one Mr. Larry's Gallery for playing some jazz. As they were avid New Orleans jazz fans, the Honeymooners followed the band and were introduced to Larry Borenstein, along with a number of living jazz greats that had gathered that evening for a session. Upon seeing the band, Sandra and Alan decided to stay in New Orleans for a few more days, just enough time to hear them play again. After the session, Larry serves beer to the musicians. He meets Sandra and Alan and tells them the gallery will be moving soon and that the space will be available if they want it. I'm asking $400 rent a month and it will be all yours, Borenstein said. We looked each other in the eyes and said, yes, we'll go for it. And that was the beginning of Preservation Hall. The Jaffees noticed that New Orleans had still Jim Crow laws that banned the mixing of races. But they want to give retiring musicians a new chance to play again, the way they did 20 to 30 years ago. Sandra was once arrested in her venue for flouting the ban on integration because she hired black musicians. The judge banged the gavel and said, in New Orleans, we don't like to mix our coffee and cream. Sandra burst out laughing and said, that's funny. The most popular thing in New Orleans is cafe au lait. The first two years, the Jaffees had to make some money in order to pay the rent and the bills for Preservation Hall. During the 50s, traditional jazz had taken a backseat in popularity to rock and roll and bebop. Word spreads throughout the city that the new owners of Preservation Hall is bringing back the original New Orleans jazz. For just one dollar, they will hear jazz as it was played 20, 30 years ago. Sandra welcomes visitors with a big smile. People are 
sitting on wooden benches, sitting on the floor. There's no drinks. It's pretty hot in there, too, in the summer. And for that, I think they're going to get some really fine entertainment. The Jaffees hired unemployed musicians, giving them the opportunity to play their original New Orleans jazz sound again. The success of the sessions was overwhelming. In order to let more people enjoy the original jazz sound, Allen founded the Preservation Hall Jazz Band. He organized the band for a string of performances throughout the country and abroad. In 1969, Sandra gave birth to her first child, Russell, followed two years later by Benjamin. Russell followed a different path than his brother and became a successful speech-language pathologist in St. Louis. Here we see little Ben Jaffe in a door opening of Preservation Hall. Sandra has already stopped working to raise the children, while Alan toured the country. Ben loved playing football, but had to stop due to ankylosing spondylitis. Ben started playing bass in his school's band at the age of seven, and several years later to perform in the All-Stars Brass Band. When Ben is 16 years old, he is hit with devastating news. His father, Alan, dies of cancer at East Jefferson General Hospital in New Orleans. After Alan's death, Sandra returns working for Preservation Hall. Ben studied music at the Oberlin Conservatory in Ohio. Here's Ben with a classmate and finger plucking a bass. After his graduation in 1993, he returns to his beloved city and becomes manager of Preservation Hall. Sandra retires, moves to Florida and hands over the company to Ben. In 2010, he married Jeanette and they had two daughters. Any night of the week you can come here and you'll hear some of the greatest music on earth. Ben continues his parents' mission and takes the band on tour around the world. Sandra frequently visits New Orleans meeting her son and loved ones. In 2006, Sandra and Ben were awarded by President George W. Bush with the National Medal of Arts. Sad news reaches the Preservation Hall. Sandra passed away on December 27, 2021. Sandra is buried at the Gates of Prayer Cemetery in New Orleans. Hurricane Katrina and the COVID virus had a devastating impact on New Orleans. Nevertheless, Ben and his staff managed to survive and are once again holding popular jazz sessions every night in the Preservation Hall and touring with the jazz band around the country and the world. Thanks to their determination, vision, and belief in original jazz music, Sandra and Alan were in the right place and the right time in 1961 to give New Orleans back its proud musical roots. See y'all in New Orleans, thank you. Preservation Hall.